What's up everybody, I'm Jesse, or as you all may know me as Game Over Jesse, and here with me to discuss The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, what we like about it, what we dislike about it, and what we think the future of the Zelda series is going to be after Breath of the Wild, Jihab. So why don't you go ahead and let everybody listening know who you are and where they can find your stuff. My name is Jihab, as Game Over Jesse just said. Uh, I make gaming videos, mostly comedy stuff, over on my channel, Jihab. And uh, that's where you can find me. I also sometimes do the odd, uh, I guess, informational video. I sometimes do reviews. I, I do a lot of uh, uh, spontaneous stuff. So uh, you'll find me over on Jihab. And uh, yeah, that's where my stuff is. Yeah. And thank you for having me, by the way. Oh, yes. Thank you for joining. This was all kind of last minute. So thank <laughs> you. Uh, so we're going to begin talking about what we liked about The Legend of Zelda before we get everybody hating in the comments on what we don't like about the game. <laughs> because it's been kind of odd. I know, like with the last few home console Zelda releases, everyone had kind of differing opinions on it. Like with Skyward Sword, for sure. some people oh, may have, sure. yeah, some people may have liked the story, but couldn't get past the motion controls. Twilight Princess wasn't really their thing, but with Breath of the Wild, it's been getting tens, and like the lowest score that it gets is still a nine or an eight mm -hmm. all across the board. So with this game, uh, it, it seems almost everybody. Yeah, I feel. I mean, like, I feel like on the internet, you never. People don't like. As soon as it's a game they like, and you say anything negative about it, they get super defensive about it. But you know, you just gotta understand that all, pretty much, all game opinions are subjective. And with the Legend of Zelda, like everything we say here, you know, you may love it, you may absolutely think it's the worst something that we like, but. Uh, with with this game, I think it's just the general quality that shines through, and I think that's why uh, it's just it's we're, we're gonna have to go more in depth about it later. But <laughs> yeah. uh, there's a lot of stuff that makes this game uh, so great, I guess. Yeah, and we'll begin talking about what exactly we think makes it so great. So to kind of make this as quick as possible, because I'm sure we could talk about hundreds of things that we like about this game. So let's keep it to a small three to five list. Mm -hmm. So, your first impressions of this game, uh, yeah. you played this game at events before the release, correct? Yes, I did actually, I did actually. That's It's funny that you should say that, because uh, I was thinking about that the other day. Uh, is it okay if I start talking about it? Yes. Okay, so, uh, basically, I played it at a event February 3rd, so that's a month, literally a month before the game released. And my first impressions were actually not the best. Oh, uh, no. First of all, yeah, I was actually dis the, the the TVs they had at that event were absolutely like, were not very good. They were very washed out, very unsharp, and just they were not very well. Like they didn't even represent the colors accurately or anything. So yeah. for first impressions were that it looked very ugly. It uh, it just it, we weren't playing the final code either, so the game ran very poorly. And I just, I had a very hard time adjusting to the controls because they were very new to me. And yeah. even when I first bought the game when it came out, it felt different to me. And, uh, but when I actually got my hands on it, like the for March 3rd, uh, when I first played it, I, I, I don't know, it just, it felt different when you run up to that like little hill and, uh, you know, you see the intro screen, the music plays. Uh, it, I, I can't help but smile every time I see that. It's just... I don't know. It just show it, it showcases you what you're about to get. You're about to get this open world experience. And the second time, like when I actually had the game at home, I played it. It it felt different. It felt way more polished. Because when I went to the event, I tried to hype myself down as much as possible so I could get uh, as good of an opinion on everything I did, uh, you know, as possible. Uh, but my first impressions when I absolutely the first time I played it were actually a bit more on the negative side, I guess. All right, and that was due to, as you mentioned, the TVs weren't properly mm -hmm. set up. The final oh, build that they not. were using wasn't working as well as it should have. Mm -hmm. And was it was uh, was this on the yeah. Wii U or the Switch when you were playing? Th that was, it was on the Switch. It okay. was, we were playing on the Switch. All right. So, with my first impression, you, you mentioned like when you run up to the hill and it kind of uh -huh. pans out and you can see how huge this world in front of you is. Yeah. It looks absolutely gigantic, but the thing that you don't realize is there's still a world almost almost half that size that's behind you that you're also yeah, not seeing like, during I'm, that pan out. 
I remember when I realized that what, as I was playing, I was like, wait a minute, there's something behind the Great Pecker as well. Like, <laughs> yes. you, don't even, you don't even get to see that stuff. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, like when you actually realize how big the world really is. Yeah, when, when you see that shot, you're looking at Death Mountain, Hyrule mm -hmm. Castle, and like a huge forest, trees, everything else, giant hills everywhere. But there's still like mountains and everything south of yeah. the Great Plateau. So this, the entire scope of this game is pretty mm -hmm. crazy. And I think a problem that a lot of people might have thought about going into the game, with, especially with Nintendo it being one of the first games they've actually done this size, is that it was going to be kind of empty and not fleshed yes. out everywhere. But one of the things that I liked about it is everywhere you go, like I think there's 900 Korok seeds that you can yeah. get. <laughs> So literally yeah. everywhere you go, you can think you're lost, but if you just keep going in that direction, you'll come across a shrine. Maybe there's a hidden village or town, some uh, towers that you can climb up and see everything on the map. Just everything in this game, if you think you're lost or you're not close to anything and you need to head somewhere else, if you just keep going in the direction you're going, you're going to find something. Yeah, that, see, that's like that's one of the best points. I mean, we were talking about before, you know, it getting such high scores. And I think this is the reason why it gets such high scores is just like because of this. Because I mean, I love. Let's say, let's take up The Witcher Three as an example. I love that game. I absolutely adore it. Yeah. Uh, previously, this was my favorite open world, as in like how it looked, how it felt, where you could go and everything, and how I felt the exploring worked. Uh, Zelda takes the cake for me now. It's the top one for me because. In other RPG games, there's always, you know, I guess you could call it the filler, as in traveling and everything, and, you know, you could call, just call it less exciting, you know. But the thing that Zelda does, that I feel like no other open world game really has done it, is this whole freedom, is how, like, every, like, you get sad, sidetracked all the time, but it becomes a part of your adventure, it becomes a part of the journey, you're like, oh, so I'm moving to the city, but it's not just, you know, I'm just, you're not just walking there, it's something's gonna happen on the way, you're probably gonna run into people, you're probably gonna find an interesting quest, a shrine and everything, and everything's interesting to do, and it sort of happens naturally, it's not that, like the game tells you to do this, it sort of leads you into it, but mm -hmm. it doesn't force you to do it, and everything feels like a choice, and you just, you make your own journey throughout the game. Yeah. And it just feels so natural. It just, it, it works so well. And I think that's why it's a big, big selling point for the game. And they really mean it when they say that it's completely free <laughs> and you can play it any way you want. Yeah. I, you, I, you really can. I kind of like how they used open air instead of open world whenever they were first <laughs> promoting it. Because yeah. with open world, I think about like Skyrim and The Witcher, and mm -hmm. you're kind of stuck on the world itself. Like you can go yes. on the water, the land, and everything. But in this, I think what they meant by the open air concept is when you're traveling from one point to another, you're not just traveling on the land itself. You're traveling through the air by mm -hmm. paragliding or climbing mm -hmm. up a mountain and jumping off or something like that. So. Yeah. I think that's what they meant by open yeah, air. Yeah, the paraglider, the paraglider is way, uh, like, I mean, it seems like just an obvious item to have there, but I think it's way more important than people think, because, uh, you know, it gives you sort of like a, because uh, in other games, let's say Skyrim, you know, if you climb up a mountain, you're up <laughs> on the mountain, then you're going to have to get down. You yeah. Know? I mean, <laughs> I know what you're thinking, you're going to get on your horse and just like, you know, go up the mountain on the rocks, uh, like you do with all those glitches, but uh, in Zelda, it's like, you get up on this mountain, you get a great view, you can find a bunch of shrines and a bunch of probably monster camps and everything. But then, like, it's not like you're, it's going to be like, oh, you know, now I have to go down all the way. You just jump off and you just fly away, you know. And it's, I don't know, I just think it, like, it's such a good way of doing it. It really, it gives you, uh, I don't know, it gives you a reason to climb places. It gives you a reason to explore more because you're like, it, it's going to, I don't know, there's always a fluidity to your exploring. And yeah. I love that. Because in, in Skyrim, one of the biggest problems that I had with it is when you're first going to a new town or a new place, and this was in The Witcher as well, if there's a huge mountain blocking your way, you're thinking, okay, will it be faster to go around the mountain, climb yeah. up it, and then go back down? But in this, you can just climb up the mountain and then glide down. So you exactly. cut your time in half. So I thought that was really interesting. And something else that someone 
took as a negative with this game, but I yeah. looked at it as more of a positive, so I'm including it in what I liked about the game. Uh, but mm -hmm. before we get there, because this kind of ties into it, which Zelda game would you compare Breath of the Wild to the most? Because we know, like, okay. if you look at the Temple of Time, obviously yeah. it looks identical to the one from Ocarina of Time. Uh, yeah, yeah. The exactly. Hyrule Castle looks like it was plucked out of Twilight Princess. So there's all of these different connections to all of the past games, but yeah. when you were actually able to play through it, what Zelda game did it remind you of the most? Mm. Uh, I like that question a lot. Uh, that's that's a very hard one, because uh, gameplay-wise, I can't say it compares to any really. I feel like there's there's bits of every Zelda game in there. I can see every Zelda game, like the combat, I feel is a uh it comes a lot from like wind waker there's like a lot of the same effects when you hit enemies and stuff and but they've expanded upon it and the art style is also sort of like wind waker skyward sword ish but like more advanced uh but then the general overworld you know all the art all the art styles and everything uh for the houses and you know how everything's built is a lot of like twilight princess uh oh, it's just it's I can't pin down a single Zelda game for that. There's just and like then you have all the fire, you know, fire rods and all the items and everything, which sort of reminds me of a link to the past with all the you know expensive items and everything and how you know you sort of get them just by exploring. And uh, I don't know, like it, I can't put my finger <laughs> on a specific one that would uh, remind me of the uh, Breath of the Wild the most. It's it's a really difficult question to answer, I think. Yeah, uh, with me, this question mm -hmm. kind of came up because yesterday uh, I made a tweet saying something like, what is... I forgot which tweet it was, but it was something like, what was the <laughs> hardest thing, puzzle, or enemy that you've come across, or what do you like the most uh -huh. or dislike the most about uh, Breath of the Wild? And somebody was complaining that the main story was too short. And I said, mm -hmm. well... I think this game mostly compares to Majora's Mask in the sense that the direct story is you go to each side of the world, in this case Hyrule, but in Majora's Mask yeah. it's Termina. And yeah. there are the four main dungeons with the four main yeah. bosses. And then right. uh, once you beat all of them, you can go to the final boss and get the true ending, which uh, yeah. in... Breath of the Wild, it's fighting Ganon at Hyrule Castle, and Majora's Mask, it's fighting Majora on the moon, or wherever the crazy dimension that he yeah, takes yeah. you to is. Then so, again, I think the true ending doesn't come from beating all the divine beasts, does it? I'm, I'm not really sure. <laughs> uh, I don't know, are we allowed to pretty much talk about any spoilers? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to put a spoiler warning at the very beginning of the video. Yeah, okay. So. Alright, well... I mean, basically, I think, I'm pretty sure the memories you gather is what gives you the true ending. Uh, right. That's from what I've heard, and that's what it seems like to me, but uh, I do, uh, per, like, definitely agree with the whole point that it's like, you know, going from, uh, I, I did actually sort of think about that, I didn't think about it just now when you asked me that question, but it is true that you sort of go to the different areas of the map, and uh, it does remind you a lot of the Majora's Mask, yeah. but that's like what I said, it, there's so much of, like, every Zelda game in this. Yeah, and with... It, with games like Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, you get the story from going yeah. to these different places and completing the dungeons. The characters will update you on what happened, what's going to happen, and everything like that. But with Majora's Mask, you don't get that much of the story if you just go to the dungeons. Just like in this yeah. game, you don't get what I would say is the real story if you just go dungeon to dungeon. The yeah. real story in Majora's Mask comes from talking to the NPCs, doing all of the side quests. Just like in this game, the side quests are where the real story is. Getting your lost memories, doing side quests for NPCs, learning about what happened to that area, yeah. where certain characters are, like the history of the Zoras and everything else. So just like with Majora's Mask, I think the story to this game isn't tied down to the main dungeons the story is, is in, in the world right much. Uh, that's yeah. why i compare it mostly to majora's mask for at least okay. the way that it's structured yeah that's but really it, good, it does uh, have uh elements from all the other zelda games mixed into it 
like I mentioned earlier, the Hyrule Castle, um, the Temple of Time, somebody yesterday or the day before posted a picture of like the ruins of Lon Lon Ranch from Ocarina of Time. Mm-hmm. So, uh, this, oh, you mean in Breath of the Wild? Or? Yeah, like you you, oh. you can go and um, like it doesn't have That's the walls sad. that's surrounding Lon Lon Ranch, but there's oh. the the building that you have to push the blocks around to get the heart piece. That's like on the far corner of Lon Lon oh. Ranch. You you can see that building and it's kind of tore down and then uh, oh. the big uh, circle dirt path that you have to race opponent on. Mm. You can yeah. still see that with like the <laughs> fence torn down. So like it's in ruins. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. like when you go there, it doesn't pop up Lon Lon Ranch. It just says Ranch Ruins. Yeah, or something like oh, that. So, I, I I haven't found that yet. That's interesting. That's yeah. Cool. Uh, I seen, I think it was Game Explain or somebody was like posting pictures of it, yeah. which made me want to just go out and explore and visit as yeah, many places as areas. possible to see if there's any other connections to like uh, Twilight Princess or Ocarina of Time that I haven't came across yet, or maybe even mm-hmm. Skyward Sword. Yeah, I mean, while we're still on the topic of what we liked and stuff, because, uh, I mean, I have some points about the story I want to say later, like when we All talk right. about stuff we didn't like and everything, but uh, I do love, like, what you said. I do love the little, like, sort of hints and Easter eggs they put, like, to older Zelda games when you just go out and explore, and mm-hmm. you just, you find uh, so many of these things that, like, sort of remind you of older Zelda games, and just, I don't know, they just, I can't put my finger on it, but they just perfectly nailed the exploring in this game like to me i've never i've played video games since i was three years old that's that's a long time i'm 19 now and uh <laughs> you like i just i've never put so much time in a game because it just keeps me engaged engaged from play session to play session there's always something i want to do something i always want to explore and this world uh, like you said before it's the, the story is told through the world you know you 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 run you you know you roam around on your horse and you see all these ruins of guardians and you can sort of you you really get a story told from you just from exploring and like you said talking from M- to npcs uh some of them tell you old legends they it, some of them even give you mini cutscenes just by listening to them uh, i've gotten like someone singing a song for me that <laughs> basically gave me a little cutscene, and i was surprised you know that this is just hidden in the like inside quest you know you don't even have to see this and it really rewards your exploring with more and more information on the world more and more just fun like it, the, i love how the game doesn't need to reward you with weapons or armor or gear like you're you're content with the ex- with the with the with the experience you get yeah. that's like the the reward itself and that's something i've never really felt from a game before yeah and we were talking this is going to be the last thing that i mentioned about what i like about it i mean yeah as i said earlier i could make a list of hundreds of different things that i like about it but just to keep this short this will be uh the last thing that i like and then you can give the final thing that you like and we can move on um yes so one thing that i noticed while playing this game is almost everywhere you go whether it's a place that's named after something from the past if it's a character that has a name similar to another character but there's only two or three letters that are changed it seems almost everything references things in the past like there are lakes or rivers Mm. named after some of the zora from majora's mask or ocarina of time yeah there's uh like Tingle isn't in the game, or if he is, I haven't came across him yet. But to the very east of the map, there's a shrine on an island called Tingle Island. Tingle Island, yeah. And it just has that. the L and E flipped at the end uh-huh. of it. Um, there, the Happy Mask salesman is not in this game, but there is a Happy Mask salesman. Oh, I haven't found him yet. That's cool. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's not the one from Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask that everybody. Th- thinks but there's a character that looks completely different and you could make the Mm. argument that he's just wearing a mask or whatever (laughs) but uh he looks kind of like someone you would expect to be into all of the little creepy stuff in the world he's he's basically a fan of the monsters you go to him and you oh yeah i know which one yeah okay i know which one you you trade in all of your monster parts for yeah uh money that he just calls mon and then you can mm-hmm. spend it on stuff. Some of the things that you can spend it on 
um, is different masks and the masks just like in Majora's Mask have different abilities to where if you put them on like if you put on a Bacoblin mask then the Bacoblin mm-hmm. will think you're one of them and they won't attack yeah. you so I thought that was really cool that the happy mask yeah. salesman isn't in the game but Got there is a happy mask salesman in the <laughs> game and then it's funny yeah you, you keep going uh, yeah I was just gonna say like there's rivers, towns, NPCs, and everything. Someone even came across an NPC north of the Great Plateau, uh, next to one of the stables, where the NPCs looks like Iwata. So. Oh yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him. I've seen yeah, him. Yeah. So I was streaming today, and I even found them. Yeah. Th- this game, it just it takes. Even if it's a game that's not necessarily in this timeline. It still mm-hmm. references that game. So I think that's really cool. They really went out of their way to please the fans. They could have came up yeah. with brand new original names for everything. But like there's Maku Lake or whatever his name is from Majora's mm-hmm. Mask. Uh, there's all of these different places. But yeah, what, what's the, the final thing that you like? Yeah, about it's game? actually going to lead in from what you said because it reminded me of, uh, I, I guess, one of my strongest points for the game. Uh, and. Uh, it's just like you said with that happy mask salesman. I, I I'm, I'm amazed that I didn't even make that connection. But uh, the whole thing that like I like I said I've played 120 hours of this game. Yet I'm still finding new features like this. Uh, I mean, th- there's so many things you can do in this game. I recently just find found out that you can. Uh, I I hope I don't spoil this for anyone. <laughs> but you got a spoiler warning. But you can buy. There's a house in the game you can get. Yes, uh, yes. I had no idea this was a thing until just the other day. I was speaking to someone. They're like, hey, you can buy this house. I'm like, is this Is this just like, I thought it was first, like, you know, just a, the side quest. And then in the end, you, you know, you're probably not going to get an actual house. But you get an actual house. You yeah. get to even put furniture in it. I'm like, the, how would this, I'm 100 hours in. <laughs> and I just found out you can buy a house. Like, how no game just keeps all these things away from you. But you, you can still find them. And it just makes me want to keep exploring. Because I'm like, what? But, you know... I think I know what, what I'm gonna find, but I, I never know for sure because like they, I just like I just built a town during a stream yeah. today, yeah, and that's... it's just amazing. Like what well, I can, there's just it's just so packed with things, and there's always something new around the corner. So uh, that's definitely my strongest point, or one of the strongest points for me. And the last thing I guess I'm gonna there's more things I like, but <laughs> to keep it short, uh, these are like the biggest points for me, I guess. Yeah. And that's actually really interesting because I came across that and it was like uh, they're tearing down the house and Mm -hmm. they mentioned that you can buy it, it saves them work and everything. And I'm like, well, you know, this house, they're they're already halfway demolishing it. (laughs) So uh, I went inside and it was kind of empty. So I was like, "Uh, why not? Like, I probably won't visit here. There's probably not a real reason to do this. But I went ahead and did it thinking maybe I'll get some rare item or something like there'll be a treasure chest in the house but whenever you complete everything you don't just get a house you get to furnish your house you get the little sign in the front and then you get this entire village that you can basically build from scratch and you have to go to like one of each of the races Uh and you can bring the people in to work on the village and everything and then you get some really rare items that you can buy from the store so it's really interesting how they did that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm super happy that <laughs> this is so packed with stuff and it's absolutely amazing. So uh, that's, I guess that's uh, a little bit of, you know, what we liked about the game or yeah. some of our strongest points. And now we're getting ready to turn those likes that everybody left into <laughs> dislikes. <laughs> because now uh, people are going to hate. What's up everybody, really quick before we get to the usual in slate, I wanted to mention a quick update for this channel. I'm trying to bring together a few new series other than the usual discussions and news videos that we do. I would like to bring quality reviews, let's plays, do more live streams, a top 10 series, and more analysis videos. However, to do this, I need your help. Between being a new father, YouTube, and my real job, I don't have the time to work on all of these videos. So I'd like to bring on other people who can help out from time to time, like Sissizi and others who have helped host and edit videos before. To make this all happen and to get awesome rewards for yourself, head over to patreon.com slash gameoverjesse where you can get shoutouts and videos, join our group discord and chat with us whenever you want, be a guest on some of our videos, and much more. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. 
I would like to give a huge thank you to this month's Patreons for their support. George Martinez, Glenn Cassio, Hen Hu Tienen, Lunarium, Magic Tech Review, The Itch Network, and Harris Priest. Thank you all for everything and it's because of your support that I'm able to find the time to do these videos. If you would also like to support this channel, head over to patreon.com slash gameoverjesse where you can find all kinds of great rewards like joining on a video, being added onto our discord chat, having your discussion or topic featured on one of our videos, and much more, including having your own custom artwork similar to my own, drawn of you in any anime or video game style you would like. Finally, I would like to give a huge thank you to Nomo Designs and CSGuitar89 for providing the music and artwork for this channel. <laughs>